Hello everyone, my name is Peter Park and I'll be hosting the PV System Performance 1.0 training seminar for all of you today. Thanks for joining. Some of the terms we'll, we'll be talking about today will be module efficiency, DC capacity, power versus energy, and of course system performance. The presentation will conclude with setting correct customer expectations and best practices. The purpose of this presentation will be to make sure you will walk away with the correct understanding of these terms and you will also come to a sound conclusion about PB systems and their performance and whether they're justifiable reason to be concerned about a system. Whether you're an engineer, a sales rep, or a consumer, this presentation should be very helpful for you to understand terms and how we use it in the solar industry today. Let's start with a very well-known technical term that is commonly used to compare different PV module products. Now, even if you're new to solar, you've probably heard a lot about efficiency. Unfortunately, for how often it's used, it's also commonly misunderstood and misapplied, especially when trying to understand what energy protect production to expect. The definition of efficiency is actually the PV module's ability to convert sunlight into usable power within a given area. The formula shown here can be used to calculate the efficiency of any PV module. The formula tells us that efficiency is equal to the module power rating divided by 1000 watts per meter squared multiplied by the module area. The 1000 watts per meter squared comes from the STC standard that's used widely in the industry to base the nameplate rating of the product on. And the PV module area is the total area of the PV product, which includes both the active area and inactive area. The active area is considered the part of the PV module that actually generates electricity, which is usually the total number of PV cells. If you take this formula and only use the area of the PV cells to calculate the efficiency, then you come up with what we call the aperture efficiency, which does not include the inactive area of the PV module, like the area between the outside cells and the frame, for example, or for a Miosole flex module, the tab area where the junction box is. Those would be considered inactive area. So now that we understand efficiency, let's understand the implications. If you were looking to do a project and had the choice between a 23% efficient module and a 16% efficient module, which would you choose? Well, on the surface, the 23% module looks very attractive, but what are the actual benefits of higher efficiency? Better efficiency does not actually guarantee better performance. I know that's hard to believe, but people have a misunderstanding of efficiency and it leads to false conclusions. However, better efficiency does mean less area required for the same DC capacity. It means less balance of system components to install the same DC capacity and this leads to less labor that's required to install the same DC capacity. So that sounds great, doesn't it? If you look at the diagram here at the bottom of the presentation, you can see a 24 panel system made up of 250 watt panels equating to a six, quote, six kilowatt system. The home on the right that uses 340 watt modules need 25% less space to equal to the same six kilowatt system. That's a clear example of how efficiency can be a benefit. Why doesn't everyone use the highest efficiency modules on the market for all the projects? Well, it turns out that high efficiency PV modules are usually more expensive than lower efficiency modules at a dollar per watt scale. So you would have to calculate the trade-off between paying more for the panels versus the balancing system and labor savings. It is important to remember that DC capacity is, um, has to be the same to compare the same efficiency. But there are two common misconceptions of efficiency that I'd like to caution you about. Number one, higher efficiency module does not mean that the module will produce more energy when installed in the field. Number two, efficiency is not a factor when determining overall system performance. 
The efficiency is all about power within a given area. It does not guarantee or equate to an expectation of how well it's going to be performed in the field because we're going to soon see on the slide later that talks about factors for system performance that efficiency is not even part of the equation. Energy production in the field actually depends on how well the overall PV system is performing. The system performance is actually dependent on many factors and it goes well beyond than just the PV module. Understanding the difference between efficiency and energy production is very fundamental in understanding how a system performs. Before we get into system performance, which is the main topic of this presentation, I'm going to clarify some terms. Some of these terms I already used earlier in this presentation and I'll be using it throughout the rest of the presentation. It's very important that we have an accurate understanding of terms like DC capacity, power, and energy. Let's start with DC capacity. The term DC capacity refers to the sum of the module rated power of the product that makes up the system. The module rated power is also sometimes called the nominal power or the nameplate rating of the PV module. This is the power rating that characterizes the PV product. This power rating is also the power rating you find on the product label, data sheets, sales documentations, and any other marketing documentation. You'll notice on the data sheets that the electrical specs, including the power rating, is based on STC. STC is an acronym that stands for Standard Test Conditions. It's a standardized condition to measure the power of the module that's accepted by everyone in the industry. It's simply a way for different products and companies to compare apples to apples when it comes to electrical specifications and products. Unfortunately, in the solar industry, we are terrible at standardizing terms sometimes, and DC capacity is one of the worst terms in this regard. In the industry, you'll hear many different terms that all refer to DC capacity. Don't let yourself become confused when you hear terms like peak power, system capacity, watt peak, kilowatt peak, rated power of the system, system size, nameplate capacity, rated capacity, and nominal capacity. It's even possible that someone out there may have made up their own term that's not listed here. It's not just you. This is confusing at first for a lot of people, but it's important to understand that they're all referring to the same definition of DC capacity we just talked about. For veterans in the industry, we use all these terms interchangeably, so once you're comfortable, feel free to do the same. <clears throat> Let's do a quick and easy example to make sure I got my point across. If you have 26 PV modules rated at 300 watts each, then you have a DC capacity of 7800 watt peak, or equivalently 7.8 kilowatt peak. Simple, right? Pat yourself on the back. Good job. So now let's understand the implications. So DC capacity is used to characterize the size of the system. It can tell you how much product is being used in the system. DC capacity is also used in sales terminologies to price product at a dollars per watt. The watt is referring to rated power of the system or the product itself. DC capacity is also used to design the PV system in calculations like DC to AC ratio. So it's an important concept to understand. It is important to remember that DC capacity is a rating and not the absolute power of the system. What do I mean by that? Well, the absolute power is the power measurement made at the system or products that measured in the particular condition. Sometimes people think that because a system has higher DC capacity that it should produce more energy, and that is just not the case. I wish it was that simple, but you're going to find out that there are a lot of factors that contribute to the energy production of the system. The absolute power of the system in the field varies constantly, but the DC capacity is a constant. So be careful not to assume that the same DC capacity means same install cost, installed area, which you guys know is based on the efficiency now, number of products installed, balance of system components, installation design, 
DC capacity is a power rating that is a helpful tool to characterize systems at a high level, but it does not tell you much of the actual system performance. We're going to go to two, the next two basic terms that's used in the industry constantly and very important to have an accurate understanding of. And although it's basic, I hope you bear with me that I'm just going to go over this very quickly so we can all make sure we're on the same page. Power versus energy. Power and energy are two different things. Power is a rating with metrics like watt, kilowatt, megawatt, and even gigawatt. Energy is power over time with metrics like watt hour, kilowatt hour, megawatt hour, and even metrics like gigawatt hour. So a quick and easy example we can go over is the light bulb example I have here. If you have a 100 watt rated light bulb and use it for one hour, then you have consumed 100 watt hour of energy. If you use the 100 watt rated light bulb for three hours, then you have consumed 300 watt hour of energy. Not very hard once you get the concept, right? Good. Now, I felt compelled to talk about power and energy before we finally talk about system performance because system performance is all about energy and not power. It's the power over time we care about and not power at an instant or the power rating. This is a common misconception people have about system performance and sometimes they don't even know that power and energy are related to each other but are two different concepts. When talking about system performance, what are we really talking about? System performance refers to how well the system is producing energy. That's it. Now, there are some nuances about this. To understand whether a system is outperforming, meeting expectations, or underperforming, you need something to compare the actual energy output at the site with an expectation. So coming up with that expectation is critical now to assess the system performance. So by now you should understand that power rating is a constant and absolute power varies over time based on different conditions. So if energy is the absolute power over time, you have a wide number of factors that can impact system performance. What type of modules are you using? Where is the system located? Is it a hot and bright environment or a cold and cloudy environment? Is there shading at the site? How was the system designed? What's the tilt? and azimuth of the design of the system. How hot do the cells get because the hotter the cells, the lower the voltage? How efficient are the inverters? Is there any airflow on the back of the panels? What is the ohmic loss over the cables, like the home run cables that go going back to the inverters? And are there any module level power electronics like optimizers? Now this is just to name the common things I can think of. Basically, any quality issue in installation can impact system performance as well. So there are many things that can impact the system production of a system. Hopefully, now you can see that even if a system has a higher DC cap capacity rating, it can easily produce less energy compared to another system based on all these factors. So what does it mean when a customer says that they're disappointed in the system performance? We must understand what the expectations are and whether they were technically sound expectations based on the overall design of the system. We need to make sure we compare the actual performance to the expected performance modeled with the exact same system assumption. We want performance that is comparable to each other. So this implies coming up with expectations that assumes a system design with the same tilt, azimuth, same product, same location. All these things are critical to come up with correct expectations. If you consider all the variable and system performance, you can now see how you can easily come up with an expectation that is not comparable. It is always wrong to compare the power production between two different systems in the field. It's not necessarily wrong as, as long as you recognize that you're comparing relative performance and not comparable performance. There's a difference between bragging to a friend that your system is producing more energy than theirs rather than telling them there is a problem with underperformance on their system. Hopefully that's clear. So how do we come up with comparable performances to do this actual versus expected comparison? 
One of the ways is to use software like PVSYST that can take PAN files that characterizes PV modules in terms of behavior of light and temperature. This software can utilize weather files that have used weather data averaged for over 10, 20, or sometimes even 30 years at a particular location. To simulate even more accurate expected performance of a modeled system, you can even import actual weather data collected in the field and do a closer comparison. Using software like PVSYST Ensure, you're using comparable performance data to determine whether the system could have a problem that needs to be addressed. To cut down on unnecessary customer complaints, it's important to set the right customer expectations. The best practices will be to first educate the terms mentioned in this presentation to the customer so that they're familiar with their PV system. They should understand what they are purchasing and what type of energy output they should expect to see. You should always provide a PV PVSYST report that models the proposed PV system installed at the customer site. Make sure the customer understands that the PV PVSYST report uses weather files that are use averaged weather data and that some deviation from, uh, from the actual is to be expected. Generally, PV PVSYST reports can be accurate up to 3%. This provides a good benchmark in the case of a customer complaining of lower power production in the field. Make sure to look into weather patterns at the site and see whether there, they were, there were uncommon weather patterns for a typical year. Perhaps the weather file is not characterizing the particular weather pattern being noticed at the site for that season. If the weather pattern matches up to expectations and the energy production is lower than 5% of the PV PVSYST report, then that can be an indication of a possible problem at a system level. So in conclusion, a system performance is concerned with energy output of the system and not power. Before jumping to conclusion that a site is underperforming, make sure you have correct expectations of the system at the site. Explaining these terms and providing a PV PVSYST report to customers early in the sales process is a great way to lower the number of complaints in the field. And of course, the goal of the education is to make sure the customer clearly understands the benefits of the MioSoli product so that they can be satisfied customers after the system is installed and commissioned. You have now completed the PV Performance Training 1.0. My name is Peter Park. I'm the product manager here at MioSoli. Feel free to contact me at ppark at miosole.com if you have any questions. Mia Sole wants to thank you for your partnership and joining the Solar Anywhere movement with us. Mia Sole, we go places where others can.